Now, modes also have something that's called a range of a gesture. By the way, this makes another great exam question. Now, what is that? That is the set of states in which a gesture has a particular interpretation. That is the range. So, control N with your web browsers, the range is that it actually is consistent across web browsers. Now, most applications consist of one or more overlapping ranges, some large and some small. All right, so control N in browsers tends to be large. But Raskin also did try to forewarn us about overusing our gestures and our ranges of gestures. A fully humane interface would consist of exactly one range. Great in theory, but again, not always practical or even possible. So, the bottom line that we want to remember is we don't want to create modes unnecessarily. We want to be sparing with our use of modes. Sometimes they're needed, sometimes they can be helpful, but you need to really test your product and test the usability and test how error prone it is. Oops, there we go. So let's look at some other examples that when it comes to modes, it seems like really great ideas. All right. A lot of times when you have a product coming out, one of the things they'll really advertise is that you can customize it for yourself. All right? So you can go and set your own user preferences. Who thinks that's a fabulous idea for most users? Some of you are like, I'm not, I think it's a trick question. It actually is a little bit of a trick question. Even though by marketers it is touted as a great functionality, a great capability, and for a lot of expert users it actually is. When you actually look at the research of not just beginners but your perpetual intermediates, you find that most people do not use those user preferences. They don't customize the settings. They have a tendency to keep whatever the default is. Now, what are the reasons for this? One is most people just want to sit down and use the program. Who here wants to go and figure out how to change a, uh, a user setting in Microsoft Word every time they come out with a new version and they change the default? Yeah, not me. When that happens, what do you do? Like go to Google, do a search, and listen to everyone else complaining about it and figure out how to fix it. So one of the problems with things like user preferences where you can have these multiple custom modes is that it can be very frustrating for the user when something changes and they don't expect it, such as a change in the default. Now, another problem is that even if, let's say, you decide you're going to change the default, does the user really understand what the implications of that are? How many of you have tried to take an image or a graph in Microsoft Office and have it stay in one place when you're editing the document? Yeah, it doesn't. I've yet to figure out how to do that. Now, you can go and you can change the mode, right? You can change. Right, you, you, you can change, I can't remember the options anymore, you can change whether it's, oh, yeah, I guess on top of the text, below the text, whether it's a box, yeah, does the text wrap around it, is it above, and, or is the text above and below, even if you tell it to stay still, it still moves, move with the text, don't with the move, move with the text, you still tell it not to move with the text, and what does it do, it still moves with the text. How fun is that? So, you add complexity, but it also makes it a lot more difficult for users to understand what it is that they're actually changing. All right, now, when it comes to providing these preferences, 
it can still empower these expert users. So what's something that's really important that you want to think about when you're making a decision about what, how much you're going to allow people to personalize something? Here's my little test question for you. What should we think about? Did I meant? Yes. Give a lot of person, optional personalization options that won't affect the performance as much as how it looks and how it feels. Right. So what you want to do is you want to look at what do your typical users do? How do they use the product? Make that the default. That's going to make things easier while still allowing some preferences for the advanced users. But you also need, as you said, to make it really clear what those changes are. Yes. Most of the new phones, like good phones, have a nice Android system in default, and you can also personalize it to make it nicer. Is that a good example? Or right. I would say so with, with Android right now, the way that, because you know, of course things change over time, who knows what happens next, by the time next semester comes along, Android right now is actually, I would say, a good example. Because a lot of, there, there's been more research into usability with, with Android phones. And so there's more consistency and more seeing what is easiest for users, and that tends to be the default while still allowing for customization. The nice thing about Android phones is that you're not going to run into a problem that you may have with, say, desktops. If you have an Android phone, this is my phone. I'm not going to be walking over and saying, ah, I'm going to use my phone. Here you go. I'll pick it up tomorrow. Or I'm not going to take my phone and say, oh, Here's a nice lab here at the computer lab over in CS. Here's my phone. Here we now have a nice set of phones here for you guys to use. Does that happen? No. Now, what happens with desktops in the lab? Oh, yeah. All right, so here you are. You're used to the default. You're, or, or even you're just you're used to your way of doing things. You're like, oh. My laptop died. I had to send it off to get fixed. Now I have to go to the lab. You go to the lab, and nothing you try works. Yeah. Now, how many of you have ever been on the opposite side of that where you have to set up that lab? Anyone? Usually I have at least one person. It's torture. Absolute torture. That's why sometimes you'll see in computer labs, they will have those desktops locked down so you can't change anything because it can cause all sorts of problems. So in that case, things like personalizing in shared environments, big problem for both users as well as for those individuals who have to maintain it.